Hi, my name is Ann Edenfield Sweet. I'm the executive director and founder of Wings for Life International. And we have a wonderful guest with us tonight. I'm so excited to hear about how he started his own business. So we have Ryan Shapin with us. And uh, Soli Ball is his business partner. Uh, unfortunately, she couldn't be with us here tonight live on the stage, but she's going to be joining us later in the breakout rooms. And we are going to learn about his decision to start his own business. Now, Ryan started out life in Albuquerque, uh, joined the Navy, went off and, and was um, uh, uh, set off out of Hawaii. He ended up, my gosh, in Kuwait, um, all kinds of uh, Israel, he's trout, and then of course he ended up in India, and so we've already talked about India because I've been there too, and I love India and all the people there. Uh, but then all his life journeys ended up bringing him back to New Mexico, right? And nothing to do with the Navy and the water <laughs> and all of those things. And so we're going to find out about his business. So let's just start right off the bat, Brian. So Sounds I'm so good. excited about this. Likewise. So. You, you, you came back to Albuquerque, and tell me about starting a business and how in the world, what, what led you to think you wanted to start a business, a, a, your own business in the first place? Right, well it started with a dream, you know, living overseas, kind of um, engaging in that cafe lifestyle. So initially it was actually supposed to be a brick and mortar, you know, a cafe style uh, restaurant. So um, we should say that you've started, tell everybody what you've started, okay. because, so they know what we're talking sure. about here. So we started yeah. a, a mobile food truck, um, kind of with the same concept of a cafe that we wanted to do, but wanting to steer away from the brick and mortar and wanting to have the flexibility to be able to, to move the business, to stay on the road, to engage in different communities, we thought it was a, a better idea to, to go the mobile food route. So. so in your international traveling, and I've right. done a lot of that too, um, all the wonderful foods and things right. that you thought, and, and, and so much of life is around a dinner it table. It really is, absolutely. And around the food and absolutely. what you're eating. Okay, so then you decided you're going to start. So that's how you initially got into the food idea, because of the, the traveling. So, right. Because I think for a lot of people, the first decision is, well, what kind of business are you going to go into? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Is it scalable? Is it something that you, I mean, the biggest thing for us was, it has to be something we love, something we enjoy engaging in community once again and really providing a service through something that we both loved and that was extremely important to us um you know just because we have been able to assimilate into different cultures really spend you know um a decent amount of time in most locations that we were living and that was important for us to learn the cultures once again to assimilate um, really get a feel for the food the hospitality aspect of things and we really wanted to to bring all of that into the business model um, all backed by love. Love was the, the main ingredient, you know, to what we wanted to do, um, just because we were extended the same type of uh, feeling when we were in different places. Wow. So, so through the hospitality business, whether it was in a cafe, little tiny place, or a big restaurant, and you thought you could do that in a mobile setting. Correct. Okay. So, okay, so that, what were the next steps that you went through then in creating this business? Well, um, we didn't have an idea, actually, of a specific location. I mean, we thought about different places throughout the world, but once again, through the travels, um, specifically India, because India was the last country that I visited upon, you know, getting out of the, the military um, modality, you know. I was part of military, started doing contracting for the government as well. And once I just realized that that was no longer the path that I wanted to be on, um, I booked a one-way ticket from Israel to India, delved deeper into yoga, meditation, just kind of surrendering to life, you know, and just seeing what the next phase was going to be. And Soli was already back here in the States, um, living in Boulder, Colorado, actually. So I didn't really have a timeline as far as, you know, how long I was going to be gone, how long I was going to be in India. Um, just bought a Royal Enfield motorcycle and just started driving all northern <laughs> India into Nepal, did some trekking into Nepal, made my way back down into India and throughout the traveling it just kind of really resonated that I needed to get back home, start really spending time with my family, um, reconnecting with New Mexico in general. It was just that draw. I knew that that was at least the next step. 
Um, and actually, it was just kind of be, um, came about organically as far as the food truck was concerned because Soli ended up joining me back here in New Mexico. And we were like, hey, let's, uh, we were both working at the time. You know, I was working with individuals with developmental disabilities. And she was teaching um, in the APS system, the public school system. So we were kind of just taking our time with it, trying to, to figure out how we wanted to do it, do it the correct way. And it was a long process. So that was definitely something that we didn't understand the extent of how involved that was going to be, even just getting the truck <laughs> itself off the ground, let alone all the permits, everything else that you need to do okay, to, so, to get so, this off the so ground. Let's, and let's tell our listeners some of the things sure. that you had to consider. Because, okay, you decided a food truck. Right. Then you had to come up with a menu, I assume. Sure. Okay, then you had to come up with a name. Right. Okay. So <laughs> we're, what were some of the challenges along the way with even some of these steps? Well, the good thing is we actually joined an internship with um, Street Food Institute out of CNM. Okay. So they already had food trucks, they're a nonprofit. they already had food trucks up and running, they were bringing in individuals to basically teach you how to go into, specifically if you wanted to go into food trucking or if you just wanted to open up your own business that was food related, you know, because we didn't know, we're like, you know, we have this great idea, let's see if this is really but, something but that we want to get into. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, exactly. So, so you found a, a, a great program mentorship and a mentorship. Abs program. Absolutely. So, yeah, so you didn't just say, hey, let's go buy a truck. Right. And let, okay. Right. So, okay, so this was a learning, real abs learning process absolutely. under the tutelage of people that knew what they were doing. Without a doubt. Okay. Without a doubt. So they kind of guided you through that then? Absolutely. They were, and they still continue to be a huge you know, valuable asset for us, you know, even as we're still learning because we don't have it all figured out. We finally got the truck up and running in April of this year on top of COVID, you know, I mean, so it was basically, there were so many different variables, um, but luckily before COVID hit, we had actually gone through the internship. We really started learning what it was gonna entail. And also the South Valley Economic Development Center, they were also a huge um, resource for us as well, speaking with, you know, how to structure the business, you know, do we want to be a nonprofit? Do we want to be, you know, an S Corp, a C Corp? So, um, so you had to learn absolutely. all the government regulations. Absolutely. But that came through um, structured courses. It wasn't just, right. I'm going to just go do this. Absolutely. And, so, so you, would you advise one hundred percent. So regardless if it's a food truck or whatever. Any business, in my opinion, business. absolutely. Try to get versed as thoroughly as you can and reach out to the local resources. I mean, it's, it's great that we actually have these resources yeah. here available for us. And if we were just trying to wing it and figure it out, you know, figure it out on our own, it would have been a lot longer in our just process, you know, throughout the, throughout the way. I mean, it would have just been extremely difficult. So um, I would recommend anybody that's starting a business, regardless of what it is, to inform yourself, reach out to the resources, and definitely help them guide you okay. along the way. That's great advice. Okay, so what were some of the obstacles that you encountered along the way that, okay, the school is telling you one thing, but hey, you didn't tell me about this thing. Right. What are some of those things that you've um, found? Well, one of the biggest things once again, initially was we actually obtained, it was an old RV, a 1989 um, Fleetwood Jamboree RV that my stepbrother was actually going to be getting rid of. And the timing just happened to work out perfect because we were like, hey, well, we can use this for the food truck. And it had some damage. It had some, you know, rotted wood from water damage. So the biggest thing was basically just because I wanted to do it myself, well, myself and solely. We wanted to to handle as much of this as we possibly could. And luckily, you know, both of us are versed. She's great at decorating and seeing the vision and, you know, the flooring and all of the, you know, all of the, uh, the aesthetics, I should say. And luckily I can, you know, deal with electrical and hmm. siding, all of plumbing, if you hire without that a out. doubt. Yeah. And we were on a budget, which is also another thing to consider as well is figuring out how much money you have to put towards it, are you gonna look for outside you know, investors? Are you gonna do crowdfunding? Are you gonna just try to front the whole thing yourselves, which we ultimately ended up doing. Wow. Um, so yeah, that was once again, part of the process as well throughout the midst of everything, you know, cause once again, we were both working at the time. So it was kind of on the, not the back burner, but just investing as much time as we could in it when we could. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit, we both lost our jobs. So that actually allowed us 
the time to really put full force into getting this thing completed, which um, I guess we have to look for our, um, the blessings in disguise, you know, yeah. regardless of what the situation yeah. is. We were able to invest a lot of time into getting it off the ground, and, and that really helped springboard us, like really gave us the push to, to get this completed, get the physical truck well, yeah, completed. yeah, because now you didn't have income coming in. Right. So now you had to create Absolutely, income. absolutely. So, yeah, so you were really motivated because... Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Without yeah. a doubt. So luckily we already had the truck. We'd already set money aside for the truck, but now we had the time to really put into it okay. and do what we had to do. and. Once again, just taking the valuable information from the resources that we had, continuing to stay in touch with them as well along the way to, to get things going as far as the permits were concerned, the licensing. Um, we already had a great idea as far as what that was going to entail because of the guidance that we had though. So mm -hmm. it still took a little bit of time because a lot of the state run offices were closed. Um, uh, during I, COVID I'm as sure well. That was a challenge so too. absolutely. Yeah. Talk about some of the licenses and some of the things that you had to do that anybody, regardless food truck or not, that would have to go through to start your own business. Right. What What are some of those things that are required? Well, regardless, you're going to have to have your federal EIN. Right. To for any business, regardless, nonprofit, yeah. um, for profit, you're going to have to be state licensed as well. Um, we also had to have our application sent through just for the county, just for Bernalillo County, because we're operating in Bernalillo County as well. And on top of all of those, depending, because once again, we're primarily, we, uh, we run our business out of the East Mountains. So we're normally in Tijeras and Cedar Crest, which is unincorporated Bernalillo County. But so if we do any business in Tijeras, we also have to have an application and be licensed to operate in Tijeras. And those are good for a year? Most exactly. licenses are good for Exactly. Okay. So these are things that you're going to have to consider, at least if you're mobile. I mean, when you have a brick and mortar, you're usually established in one yeah. area, unless you're franchised and you have different locations. Yeah. However, another thing just to keep in mind that you are going to have to, because if we got our food truck on the road to different parts of New Mexico, we're going to have to talk to different counties that we're going into and get, even if it's a temporary permit, for events, things of that nature. Another thing to take into consideration is, okay. is the permitting surrounding that as well. Now, how did you go about coming up with a name? Is this something you'd been dreaming about for a long time, or did you go through a whole process of Not naming really, it actually happened organically, okay. because once again, wanting to bring our food and I guess just the ultimate message for our business Con Amor Cafe with, with love in Spanish, everything done with love because, mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell, it's like when you go to eat food, either at a mom and pop place or just at a friend's house, you know, it's that home cooked meal feeling. It's, you know, like we were sp uh, speaking about earlier, you know, when you're talking about Russian families where they're, they're bringing it all out. It's, I mean, you just feel the love, you taste yeah. the love behind the food and that was yeah. really important yeah. for us not just being some cookie cutter, just, you know, getting the food out as quickly as possible. I mean, anybody can go eat fast food, but we really wanted to bring the loving aspect, that homemade feel of our food to our consumers okay, and our so, friends. So part of the vision gave you the name. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Now, um, food trucks, that's a lot of food, a lot of inventory. Um, do you have a flexible schedule? I mean, not a schedule, a menu? I mean, are you changing that all the time? Do you have some, some tried and true? I can always go and get right. Ryan's favorite, <laughs> whatever it is, or? Well, we have our base menu, and that was honestly probably the hardest thing um, was the menu creation. We had an idea what we wanted to do, but even between myself and Soli, because I'm primarily on a vegetarian diet. She still eats certain meats, you know, so even between the two of us <laughs> trying to find common ground, you know, as far as the menu was concerned. So it's still a vegetarian food truck, but we were able to get creative um, with some of the menu items. And so we do have our base menu and we also have seasonal items that we, you know, started incorporating as well, especially coming into Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Oh, okay. So. And I mean, she's just, once again, she's extremely creative when it comes to just meal creations in general. And so 
we still have our base menu, but yeah, trying to mix it up as well and seeing what was going to work as well. You know, getting feedback from you know from our community. Do they enjoy this? Do they not really enjoy this? And it's funny. We always have this running joke. It's like I'm like, let's just get rid of the peanut butter and jelly because we kind of just had it on there for kids, and every time we're just going to get rid of it. We start getting a lot of orders for <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. So I'm like, well, I guess I guess we're going to just keep it on there. Let's just keep the base menu and. And it's been working so far. We've had really good feedback, and so we're sticking with it, at least for now. You know, who yeah. knows what the future holds. And but. you obviously have to be flexible. Because, Absolutely. Yeah. Now, okay, um, so you have a food truck, and now you've got your menu. Right. Um, how do you advertise? How did you go about And, and so for anybody starting their own business, right. what are, you can't just say, here we are, and expect everybody to show up. Absolutely. So talk about advertising and what you did and what you'd recommend for other people to do. Marketing for us has been, it's been tricky as well. Luckily, in the beginning, we were using portals such as Nextdoor, you know, for the community, just letting, before we even launched our truck for the, for the first time, we were just letting our community know that what we were all about, um, the type of food that we were going to have. We posted our menu, let them know where we were going to try to be as far as our location. And we were just trying to get feedback if this is something that the community even wanted. Um, so that was our initial step, you know, just trying to get our name out there and, and just getting whatever type of response we could. We were getting good feedback, like, oh, that would be great. You know, we even had the Route 66 car wash. Um, like, if you ever need a place to park, you can park here. We would love to have you. Love what your menu's all about. Um, and also just social media, getting to the Instagrams, the Facebook, really starting to try to build it around that as well as far as the social media presence. And also the farmer's market, which is no longer in operation because we're in the, the winter months, but that was another valuable resource, getting our name out there and also letting the community know who we were. And that was really probably the biggest thing for us, getting our name out was the farmer's market in Cedar Crest. At least once again, we had the regulars coming back every Wednesday. Word of mouth spread from there, and then we were able to really start growing our social media presence from there. And you know, once again, just word of mouth. Okay, so did you go to the same places like every Wednesday? You right. were at the, the at farmers market. Oh, correct. Okay, something correct. like that. Absolutely. Okay, so you had to find locations. Now, right. Again, location is really important. You know, when you're buying yeah, a house or anything, it's, it's everything. Location, Honestly, it's, it's, location, every, location. it's everything. <laughs> yeah. So, um, again, your mobile truck still allows you some flexibility, but it is um, important to be consistent sure. with where you are. So, how did you go about figuring that out? That was also extremely difficult just because in the areas of Tijeras and Cedar Crest, you really don't have too many options. Um, that were viable, at least what we thought were viable. So we just started asking private businesses if it's something that they would be willing to entertain to let us park there certain days or just to try to get an idea of what might work for, for us and for them. So ultimately we settled on the Triangle Grocery Store actually in Cedar Crest. Um, Rita was nice enough to let us have that corner of the parking lot. And she gave us fair warning. She's like, we've let food trucks park here in the past and they haven't done so well. So we were just like, well, let's give it a shot. And yeah. the farmer's market was literally right next door to there. So it kind of worked out perfect because we were able to tell, you know, our patrons when they would visit us at the farmer's market. We're also at the Triangle for, you know, these days of the week. So they knew to look for us at the Triangle if they couldn't catch us anywhere else or couldn't catch us at the, uh, at the farmer's market on Wednesdays. So... So that really helped out, and it kind of just grew from there. Plus, we have a huge, <laughs> a huge food truck. I mean, it's almost a 30-foot truck, you know. Um, it's turquoise, and it looks like an old barn. So it's pretty cool. So it, I mean, it stands out also. So even just passerbys, you know, that we're just driving by would usually stop and at least check out our menu. And oh, it's great to know that you're here. So we kind of built it off of that specific location and. And you know what? It's worked out great so far. So we're hoping to, to be able to continue to, to at least be there. Unless there's events, you know, private events, things like that as well, which we've been lucky enough to also get called so, for. So like a wedding, they might call you and, or? Or even just a get together, a birthday party. You know, oh, it could wow. be, okay. yeah, a number of private events. Okay. Um, as far as catering, that might be kind of difficult just because of our menu. You know, we don't really do bulk items like that. 
so everything's kind of made fresh on the fly. So catering would be a little bit difficult, but we could, we've still been able to, you know, to take care of private events and things like that. Mm -hmm. And even at the community centers, you know, certain Halloween events, the East Mountain celebration, um, that was fantastic for us as well. So community, the community aspect at least is extremely important for us as well because we really wanted to engage with community and, and be a part of that. So we've been really lucky that they've extended their, you know, appreciation for yeah. us as well. Now, a lot of companies um, at one point in another part of my life, we had a small uh, hotel chain, mm -hmm. and we started a loyalty program way before there were right. the cards, and you know, you, right. you come spend 10 nights and one's free sure. or whatever, but we had started that. Do you have any kind of loyalty program, like if you get 10 meals with us, you get something free, or have you started? We haven't started like a loyalty that? program, um, just because still trying to get our footing, still trying to, to make this a profitable organization as well. However, we still offer 10% for veterans and we also do, uh, it's basically because one of the items on the truck is smoothies and we use mason jars. So we were actually doing a return program where people would return mason jars and we'd give them a discount. Um, and that's actually worked out phenomenal. Um, really happy to see that it's less waste that we're putting out into the planet sure. and just really seeing how the communities come behind that as well and um, I mean I thought I was gonna need a collection of you know hundreds <laughs> of mason it. jars mason and I'm jar. like you know I'm like I'm sitting on you know a lot of mason jars still which is fantastic because the they, keep bringing, them they back. keep bringing them back and well, they, and that's what you want you want that repeat customer. absolutely absolutely yeah. so we're in the midst of actually structuring something as far as a loyalty program, you know, buy so many of this item, you know, get one free, because I think that is important as well. Um, so we're in the midst of working on that. I think it that. works because there are, Absolutely. we have our favorite restaurants and, if, sure. oh, well, let's go, we're one meal away from getting, sure. you know, I, th I think it, and it, I think it's good PR for, for Absolutely. people to, to, I to agree. Kind of do that. Now, okay, you've given up job. Well, you you lost your jobs because of COVID, but now you're starting in a brand new business that you don't know anything about. What what are some of the sacrifices that you've had to make because of you're your own boss? Right. Yeah. Right. So it's nonstop. Honestly, I mean, this is with any business. It really comes down to how much time, energy you're putting into the business, whether you want it to be successful, whether you just kind of want to wing it and free float it. I mean, it's, it really comes down to how much time, energy and, and love and energy you put into it. With the food-based business, <laughs> we're realizing it's nonstop. You're constantly marketing, you're constantly shopping, you're constantly prepping, you're constantly cleaning. I mean, you basically have a restaurant on wheels, so there's always something happening with the vehicle. Um, so just know that it really comes down to how much, once again, how much time and energy you want to put into the business, um, or with anything in life, you know, as far right. as that's concerned. Right. So that's definitely the biggest sacrifice is the amount of time that it does take. Cause it seems like even when you aren't working, you're, you're working, <laughs> you know, so. I run a nonprofit. I know exactly what that absolutely, is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it never ends. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, it doesn't. And so is that sacrifice worth it to you? It is. In the beginning, I think it was extremely overwhelming for both Soli and myself. Um, not really knowing. I mean, we knew it was going to be a lot of time and energies going into it because we've, you know, we've done the internships. We've seen it the whole process, everything that it's going to entail. But when it's your baby, you know, you're doing all the behind the scenes, you know, things that you didn't have to do, even going through an internship, you know, once it's your business, you handle all of it, unless you're outsourcing things like your accounting and your shopping and your prepping. And, and you can't afford to do that. You really can't. Started. I mean, yeah. unless you want to start cutting into your profits, if you are making any profits, you know, um, luckily, I can wrench around on the vehicle and the plumbing and the electrical because, once again, it's always something happening. So, and that's another thing to take into consideration as well with any business is trying to make sure that your business is up and running, you know, when you need it to be, um, regardless if you're having electrical issues or the flood. I mean, it could be a number of things yeah. which could impact your business. And if you're sitting on all this food and all this inventory. Well, and for you, weather. 
I mean, the weather snow is, is abs- com- winter is coming. Absolutely. I mean, you get a big blizzard. People Absolutely. People want to go to a food truck. Without a doubt. stuck at home. Yeah. And that's what we've had to discuss as well. And we primarily operate out of the East Mountains. And so we're not going to be able to operate year round is really what it comes down to as well. Unless we want to make it down to the city and into Albuquerque. So luckily we've both done many things throughout our lives as allowing us to, to generate income in different, um, different areas. So we'll never dissolve the business just because of the weather or just not operate it at all. But that's where we're going to also have to get creative in, you know, and still continue to pull an in income and then work the truck as often as we possibly can and knowing that it's not going to be an everyday thing, especially in the, in the winter months. So how does it feel when you're the boss? You can't turn to somebody else and say, well, they did it, or I'm blaming him or her. Um, I need my paycheck. Um, right. Where is my paycheck this week? <laughs> uh, how, how does it feel? Because it all boils down to how much it really, it's a hustle. You have to hustle yeah. it. Um, no matter how you spin it, at the end of the day, you know, you're living in that world and, you know, there really is no separation. It's, it's kind of nonstop. Once again, you know, every day, it really still comes down to how much you're putting into it and being flexible. You know, I mean, we could get hit with the, a snowstorm and just letting the community know as well, hey, we're not going to be out tomorrow because of these so, reasons. through Facebook or how? Facebook, Instagram, Nextdoor, once again, um, all the portals that we're basically, okay. you know, engaging with community okay. via. And, and also just extending our, um, our customers and our friends that do frequent us, letting them know, hey, call us if you ever, you know, if you aren't able to figure out if we're going to be out or not, just give us a call and we'll let you know. And really extending that to our patrons as well, letting them know that they can reach us and, and we can give them a better idea. You know, we're not going to be able to make it out today due to these reasons. But we're, you know, we're up to speed as far as letting our community know at least what the week's going to look like. And if we do have to make any changes um, or deviate from that, you know, just keeping everybody appraised as far as how that's going to look. Yeah. So. So did you have a lot of savings set aside to be able to do this? Because a lot of people don't have a lot of money. Right. Uh, well, that's in, yeah. I mean, luckily we did have savings to be able to put into it and also having the luxury of being able to get the truck from our stepbrother. I mean, that was invaluable as well. Yeah, and then just, that would be very expensive otherwise. Well, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, the overhead for us, I mean, I can't compare it to a brick and mortar, what that would entail. You know, when you're paying, the, you know, you have to pay the lease and you're having to pay everything else surrounding yeah. it, the lights, the water, I mean, you name it. Yeah. So luckily our overhead isn't as crazy as other businesses. Um, since it's just myself and Soli working the truck, we don't have any employees that we have to worry about, you know, keeping on payroll or anything as well, but we still have to worry how much we're going to bring in to support ourselves. So yeah. that once again has been the biggest challenge because any given day I mean you can have a great day you know 30 40 50 people visiting your truck and other days you know 10 15 people you just never know even with the brick and mortar some days are yeah, going to be slow exactly right. you yeah. just don't know yeah. um, so you have to be prepared for anything um, prepared for those days where you're going to sell out or be prepared for the days where it might just be a slow day and and get creative, you know, start running specials and really just trying to engage community to, to have them come out and look for events and look for pop-ups. And once again, luckily we have the luxury of being able to, to travel. And if there are events taking place, try to, to jump in on those. So that really helps us out as far as trying to keep things moving, keeping um, revenue, you know, coming in and, mm-hmm. and keeping things going, so. So the bottom line is, are you making any money yet? We are making money. You know, the good news is we you're are making, making enough to be satisfied with what you're making. Well, now that we're getting into the colder months, we have seen a slowdown just because of that as well. Right. So, and that's where even pop-ups, events that are taking place, they're you know not as common as they are during the warmer months. People aren't out as much, and so. I guess that's where the brick and mortar actually has the advantage to us, in my opinion, because, you know, I mean, people will still stop by even on the cold days, but a lot of people would rather go into the restaurant or, you know, kind of just go into a place where, where it's warmer and hang out and, you know, 
I mean, we get it because we still enjoy doing that from time so to time as well. Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, within our community, we, we also support local as often as we possibly can because we do feel the importance of that. Because without community, there's no way we could keep this business up and running. I mean, it's really that simple, you know, without the support from, uh, from everyone. So, for somebody starting a business um, and wanting to start a business, uh, what, what words of wisdom do you have to share with them? Don't plan on getting much sleep. No. <laughs> um, That's with children, too. <laughs> right. Have a good but vision. Even, even your own business. Absolutely. Okay, not a lot of sleep because, right. okay, this is not, not just the, the hours that the truck is open. You've got all the, the work and the preparation. Absolutely. Yeah. And you have to be mindful to self. If you run yourself into the ground, you're no longer going to be able to contribute what you really want to to your business, and it's going to show. People are going to, you know, any bit, and that's with any business. Yeah. Um, if you go into a business and somebody treats you poorly, you're not going to want to go back to that business. Right. Or if you're just not putting out a quality product like you know you're capable of doing, people are going to, they're going to taste that. So it's extremely important putting out the product that you want to put out and once again making sure that you're not driving yourself to the point where you just don't have it to give to the, you know, to the community, to your, your patrons. So. And you have to love what you do. I mean, at the end of the day, regardless of the business, if you don't love the business that you're getting behind and bringing forth, then, I mean, I don't know how it can be a successful business. And I mean, that's just personally. I mean, I'm sure that there are some. I mean, if you have a scalable product or if you have a product somebody needs and wants, then by all means, you know, you're probably going to, you know, do pretty well with that. But if you don't love what you do, I guess, once again, getting back to that's just anything generally speaking in life, then and really what's the point of doing it, you know, so. Well, I agree with you there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I certainly don't do wings for the money. <laughs> and, and I have to love it because you've got to wake up and you've got to be able to do it. And if you have a bad attitude and in the people business, oh my gosh. Right. You're, it, that, you lose that customer and they're gone and boy. Without that a doubt. word of mouth just Without a doubt. Like Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So all your good PR in the world can't make up for what, that one negative. Without comment. a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. And now, you know, how social media and just the internet in general, I mean, it doesn't take much for people to get on there and start, you know, putting their reviews. And I mean, the community is going to know real fast if, you know, if it's not good, if, it's not good, if you're treating yeah. people poorly, if they feel like they're not respected, because that's extremely important to us. Once again, um, the community aspect of it. and. Most of the people that come to our truck are, we consider friends now. Um, and that means a lot to us, just knowing that you're impacting the community to a point where not only do they want to return for the food, but it's beyond the food. It's, it's something bigger that than that. Relationship Absolutely. Yeah. And that's extremely important yeah. in the grand scheme of it all. So, so looking, looking back, and it hasn't been that long since you right. started your business, right. um, has this been a good decision for you? And for Soli, do you think? It has, um, because the what ifs, I think, of not starting the business, not giving it a shot, you know, because we could have been like, oh, it's, it's COVID, there's just too many obstacles at this point, let's just wait and ride this out and see if it's something we really want to do. I'm glad we did it, and I'm glad we did it when we did it, because it was almost the craziest circumstances that we could have ever imagined <laughs> trying to launch this business yeah. under, and we did it. And, you know, that's when it really comes, you know, there comes a point where it's like, okay, it's still not any easier, you know, um, by any means, but at least there's a reward now, you know, seeing what it's become even up to this short amount of time, you know, and just uh, since April, you know, it really hasn't been that long. We haven't even hit a year mark yet. So I'm just proud that we've been able to, to do what we have with it, really, you know, in such a short period of time. And, and having the community and family, you know, get behind us as well and really show their support and their love. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it is it is extremely fulfilling just you to You go see. to sleep at night and you're happy. Absolutely. Tired, but happy. Tired, but happy. <laughs> so, okay, so any final words of wisdom for somebody out there thinking, I want to start my own business? If you had to summarize a couple key things, um, it's got to be find the mentors, the training that you can Absolutely. do. Absolutely. 
it sounds like you had a little bit of money to fall back absolutely. on. Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Um, you had experienced what you wanted to establish right. by all your travels, so you had that idea. You knew, maybe not the exact menu, but you knew the, the basic theme of right. what you wanted to do. Right. And you were willing to sacrifice and work hard. Absolutely, absolutely. Being as prepared as possible is, it's invaluable. The more prepared you are, the less stress it's gonna take. It's just gonna be a much smoother process. All of it is gonna be a much smoother process. If you do have funding, fantastic. If you had savings to fall back on, if you have crowdfunding, and you have enough people that wanna get behind your, your vision and your dream, then all the better as well. And you know, you can't be, um, you can't be too prepared in forming a business. So, and depending on the state that somebody's opening up their business, I mean, it's gonna be pretty similar regardless of what state you're in, but there are separate laws, there's, you know. Yeah, there are every community absolutely. has laws, every state Different has, counties, yeah, you name federal it. Federal laws, you yeah, name taxes. It. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and you have to know it all, right? Without a doubt, speak to lawyers. There's free resources, once again, tap into that in your local communities and, and um, it'll help you in the long run, you know, without a doubt. Well, everybody, we've gotten some wonderful words of wisdom here from Brian. Hopefully. <laughs> and, uh, and we just wish you the best. I appreciate and, that. Thank uh, you. If you're at home and thinking about starting a business, I hope you'll really think about everything that Ryan shared because I, I think you gave great advice on, on all of it. Thank you. Well, you know, I always like to close with a story. And I was trying to find a story <laughs> because I didn't really know exactly what was going to work here. But I, I hope this works. It's called the American Businessmen's Ideas. A vacationing American businessman standing on the pier of a quaint coastal fishing village in southern Mexico watched as a small boat with just one young Mexican fisherman pulled into the dock. Inside the boat were several large yellow tune, uh, yellowfin tuna. Enjoying the warmth of the early afternoon sun, the American complimented the Mexican on the quality of his fish. How long did you take to catch it? Oh, a few hours. Well, why didn't you stay out longer to catch more fish? Well, this is enough to meet my family needs. I think we're fine. Well, then the businessman became more serious. Well, what do you do with the rest of your time? Responding with a smile, the Mexican fisherman answered, Well, I sleep late. I play with my children. I watch ball games and take a siesta with my, with my wife. Sometimes, even in the evenings, I take a stroll into the village to see my friends play guitar, sing a few songs. Well, the American businessman impatiently interrupted him. Look, I have an MBA from Harvard, and I can help you be more profitable. You could start by fishing more hours every day. Then you could sell more fish that you catch. With the extra money, then you could buy a bigger boat. And with the additional income, just think about it. Then you could get a second boat and a third and a fourth. You could have a huge fleet. Well, proud of his own sharp thinking, he excitedly elaborated a grand scheme which could bring in even bigger profits. Then, instead of selling your catch to the middleman, you'll be able to sell your fish directly to the processor, maybe even open your own cannery. Especially, you could control, it. finally, you could control your own product processing and distribution. You could leave this little tiny community. You could move to Mexico City, maybe even LA or New York, where you could further expand your enterprise. Well, never having thought about such things, the Mexican fisherman asked, but how long will this all take? Well, after a, a rapid mental calculation, the Harvard, Harvard MBA pronounced, well, probably about 15 and 20 years, if you work really hard. Well, and then what, senor? Well, that's the best part. By that time, you could sell your company, sell all the stock, you'll be very rich, and you'll be making millions. Millions? Really? What would I do with that? Ah, oh, well, the businessman boasted. Well, then you could happily retire with all the money you could make. You could move to a quaint little coastal fishing village where you could sleep late, play with your grandchildren, watch ball games, and even take a siesta with your wife. 
You could stroll to the village in the evening where you could play your guitar and sing songs with your friends. Well, the moral of the story is, know what really matters in life? And you may think that it's a far lot closer than you ever imagined. Well, it seems to me like you have found your quaint little village, and you have found what you want to do that makes you happy. I, it sounds like you probably don't need a whole fleet of global restaurants and a whole chain across the United States. No. And if you're living life, and you're enjoying life, and you go to sleep at night like I do, and can't wait to wake up the next morning to do what we do, I think that's what life's all about, don't you? Absolutely, and I've, I've heard that story, and I Have love you? that story. I love yeah. it, absolutely love it, because he's got it figured out. The fisherman has it figured out, yeah. without a doubt. Well, and I think that perhaps you have it figured <laughs> out, too, and I hope so. Thank so you. So if you're listening to this and you want to start your own business, start something that you're going to love, that you're going to want to wake up every day and do. Absolutely. And don't worry about how many millions you're going to make to be able to retire and, and do what you could hopefully do the rest of your life. So anyway, I hope you've been enjoying being with us tonight and that you've learned something. If you are joining us by Facebook or YouTube, this will be the end of the program. If you are with us with Zoom, stay right here because we're going to go to breakout rooms and then you're going to have time to talk and find out all the rest of the questions you have for Brian. So thanks everybody for being with us. A reminder, we will not be meeting uh, the next couple weeks. We will be off on Christmas break. We'll be starting again in January. So I will be sending out emails and letting you know about our next topics. We've got a great, great schedule uh, uh, all ready to go for, for next year. So thanks everybody. Have a blessed night. <laughs>